Hi guys and welcome to Studio Wildlife. As most of you are aware, tigers are my absolute favourite thing to draw and I thought I'd share with you my process for drawing a realistic tiger. In this video I'm going to cover the basic step-by-step -step approach that I follow when drawing a realistic tiger and then I'm also going to share my process for turning that basic drawing into a finished work of art. I'm working on my iPad Pro just so I can show you it really quickly, but you can get exactly the same effect using charcoal or pencil. When you're starting out with these construction lines, start by pressing very lightly and with a very light pencil, maybe an HB or even a charcoal stick. When I'm drawing a tiger, I always start with a circle in the middle of the page. I'll then draw a vertical and a horizontal line through the middle of that circle. From the centre of that circle, I'm going to move halfway to the edges along that horizontal line, and I'm going to just mark off two dots, one on each side, and these are going to be my markers for the eyes. Next, move down along that vertical line to the edge of the circle. That is going to be the midpoint of a second smaller circle that is going to be as wide as the two points that you've just drawn for the eyes. From the widest edges of that smaller circle, I'm then going to draw two faint lines to the top of that larger circle, forming an upwards pointing triangle. This is going to be the guide for the nose. The smaller circle is going to form the mouth. From the centre point, draw two curved lines towards the edges of that small circle, exactly where it overlaps the larger circle. It almost looks like a very curved W shape, or an upside down sort of seagull that you might have drawn when you were younger. From the midpoint, draw a small line upwards, and then an upside down triangle for the nose. For the bottom of the open mouth, draw two lines down, and a smaller oval connecting them. This is going to form the chin. We can then add structure to the nose by following the lines of that large upwards facing triangle and then curving them off slightly towards the eyes as we reach the midpoint of the head. Then add two shorter outwardly curving lines from the tip of the smaller triangle to the middle of the nose. I like to draw in the eyes at this stage as two smaller evenly sized circles for the iris and then a pointed ellipse or an oval shape for the black around the eyes. It's really important to study your reference photo at this stage. You always want to make sure that your eyes are level, especially if the tiger that you're drawing is face on like the one that I'm doing. If that is the case, to make them level, you just get a ruler and just place it between the eyes. Ideally, you want the eyes, the nose and the mouth to all be at the same angle. Next, I'm working on the facial structure, so like the cheekbones and the jawbones. So from the top of that mouth, I like to draw two diagonal lines to the edge of the larger circle, exactly where that vertical centre point would be, so where our horizontal line meets the edge of the circle. Mark a point on the outside of the circle directly above the outer edges of the eyes, and then connect the points that you've just drawn with another pair of diagonal lines. From the midpoint between the edge of the eyes and the edge of the circle, draw a curved line downwards that connects to the edge of the mouth. This is going to form part of the cheekbone. It doesn't look like much yet, but it will do in the later stages of the drawing. For the whites above the eyes, draw two stretched oval shapes, touching the top of the eyes and the point on the top of the circle that we made earlier. We then want to draw a flattened semicircle between the edges of both eyes to establish the eye sockets or the eyebrow or the ridge of the eyes, whatever that structure is. Now for the fur around the face, so we actually want to give it a proper head, measure the gap between the eyes and use the same size gap to mark a point to the left and the right of the eyes. This is going to be how wide our tiger's head is going to be. From these points, draw a curved line to the bottom of the muzzle. Then add two diagonal lines above this, following the same angle as those diagonal lines already drawn towards the edge of the head. Then add two semi-ovals for ears that are pretty much the same size and same shape as the ovals that you drew for the whites above the eyes. If you want to, you could add some lines for the body just to make it not look like it's a floating head, which is what I've done here. At this point, I've drawn the basic guidelines for the tiger. I've got those ears, 
eyes, nose and mouth are all level and at the same angle with each other, they are all the correct distances apart, and the eyes are roughly the same size. Now we're going to refine the drawing. With mine on Procreate, I can just set the opacity lower. You can just lightly erase the marks so that they are just barely visible. Then you want to take a softer or a darker pencil and begin to refine the drawing. I suggest using maybe a 2B pencil at this stage. Study your reference photo carefully for the shapes of those eyes, and then add the details and refine them even more. You can even lightly shade the darker areas at this stage. You can simply refine the shape of the nose by drawing an almost bubble font Y shape in the center of that triangle that we drew for the nose. Mine was a little bit too big, so when studying my reference photo, I've adjusted and made the triangle slightly smaller. You can then lightly shade in the underside and the little curved arms at the sides of the nose to give the nostrils. Next, add in the mouth and teeth. Really, no matter what tiger I'm drawing, I tend to use six small rounded triangles for the teeth in the middle, and then two larger ovals slash triangles for the bigger fangs at the side. Next is the stripe. And I've seen a lot of people that draw the stripes as they go along without these construction guides, and that is fine. But what you tend to see if you're not well practiced is you start to get a little bit wonky and things get out of proportion. Which is why we have those guidelines at the start to make sure our proportions are correct and we are following the form of the face when we are creating these stripes. I always like to start around the eyes with these stripes because I think they are the most important bit and they just give you an anchor point for the rest of the drawing. And I'm going to tell you something really important here. The specific shape of the stripes doesn't matter at all. Make sure to draw one stripe at a time and look closely at where that stripe starts and where it ends and just mark a little point. Make sure to study your reference photo and match those points to features on your drawing. So those guidelines that we've already put in place. Look at how thick the stripe is and make some small marks where it widens and where it gets thinner. Just shade in the area between those marks. I try to work symmetrically and match the stripes on either side of the face. And again, they don't have to be exactly the same as variation is good, but I do like them to be level with each other or as close to level as I can get so that the face doesn't appear wonky and out of proportion. Once you've got those stripes in, you can then move on to refining the shape of the ears and then that fluffy fur towards the edges of the face. And remember, don't just draw individual hairs. Make sure you're doing the clumps of fur when you're doing this. Now we can start to add some shading and give some actual 3D structure and form to our drawing. So lightly with your pencil or your charcoal, shade the areas that you wish to be darker. Make sure you're using your reference photo to help with this. Now, do a full lighter layer of shading all over the drawing. This is to tone the paper. You can then knock this back and gently rub with a blending stump or a tissue to soften the drawing. Because I'm using Procreate and I'm doing it digitally, I can just change the background colour of my canvas to a light grey to imitate the tone. The drawing might look a little bit flat at this stage, so now we need to bring back the detailed fur. I use my go-to tool here, the putty eraser, to draw in those clumps of fur. I'm making sure to follow the general direction from my reference photo, but also varying the way that they curve off, the size, and I also make sure to leave small gaps between each strand so that some of those darker layers show through. The areas in your drawing that are in shadow you want to erase slightly less of the graphite or the charcoal. You want them to appear grey, not white. But don't worry if you're erasing too much though, because we're going to add some more shading later on. Once we've got all our lights in, we're going to take our darkest, softest pencil that we have. This is where we're going to add in the darkest fur on the stripes, and the areas around the ears, the nose, the eyes and the mouth. Follow the guides that you've already put down, but instead of just shading the stripes this time, try to add in marks for more realistic fur, so those smaller lines following the direction of the white lines that you've just erased. Again, leaving some gaps, again varying the length and the slight direction of each strand. 
Now that you've got your darks and your lights, it's time to bring back some of the mid-tones you erased earlier. So with a light pencil or a charcoal stick, this is where we want to look at those shadowy areas once again. You've already put in the details, so we're not needing to focus on those. Instead, we're just trying to identify the simple shadow shapes from your reference photo and copy them onto your drawing. Once those shadowy areas are in, you can either then erase some whiskers or do what I like to do, is use pastel pencils or some white acrylic paint to add in the whiskers and some looser hairs above the eyes and around the tiger's face. One quick tip here is to remember that the whiskers on the shadowy side of the face are not going to be as bright as the whiskers in the light. Once this is done, this is your basic tiger face. You can apply these techniques to any reference photo. Because of my preferred style, I always like to add in a little bit of a background to my drawing. I always recommend trying to give your animal picture an environment to live in, and it could be an abstract like mine, a single block of colour, or even a realistic natural scene. It just brings a little bit more life and a little bit more of a natural, realistic effect to the piece. I have a full, real-time version of this video on my Patreon channel, where I talk through every single step of the process. I'll pop a link down to my Patreon in the description, so go and check that out. If big cats are something that you're interested in learning how to draw, then why not check out my video here where I talk through my step-by-step -step process for drawing a lion. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.